All right. Hey, everyone. Welcome to another deep dive with us. Uh, today, we're going to be looking at something that could be, well, I think it's safe to say, pretty major in the tech world. Oh, yeah. Yeah. China's claim that they've basically, well, beaten Starlink to 6G. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. That's a big one. Yeah. So uh, 6G for anyone who's, you know, still trying to figure out 5G right. is basically the next generation, right, of wireless communication. So think think faster speeds like way faster right uh and you know lower latency it's gonna be it's gonna be crazy yeah i mean it's gonna make our internet now look like dial up right exactly so our sources for this deep dive uh we've got a recent news article and then we've got some background info from uh from a space information website cool cool so basically uh the the big news here is this Chinese company, Chang Wang Satellite Technology Co. Okay. They're saying they've they've hit a data transmission speed of 100 gigabits per second. Wow. From a satellite to a ground station. Okay. Which, which is nuts, right? Yeah, 100 GBPs. That's like downloading 10 HD movies in one second. Yeah. I mean, that's that's got to be that's got to be game changing, right? Yeah. It would be a huge leap. So, but is it really 6G though, or is this? Are they just kind of setting a speed record here? I mean, what's what's the difference between this and what like you know companies like Starlink are doing? Yeah, well, that's that's where it gets kind of interesting. Uh, the article makes it seem like this is a win specifically in in satellite to ground laser communication. Right. Uh, you know, Starlink has been well, they've been doing a lot with with communication between satellites, you know, uh, up in orbit. But uh, they haven't really gotten into this direct link to to ground stations yet. So that's kind of the the big challenge then this this satellite to ground connection. Yeah, for sure. I mean, beaming that much data through the atmosphere, it's it's not easy. It's almost like uh, it's like trying to hit a bullseye, mm -hmm. you know, while you're while you're on a roller coaster. Right. There's there's a lot of factors, you know, weather interference, the distance the signal has to travel. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah. It's it's a big deal if they've actually cracked this. Okay, so even if it's not like you know six G ready to go tomorrow. This this is still huge if they've solved this problem. Exactly. And it shows, you know, kind of a different approach. Uh, Starlink, they're building this, you know, network in space. Right. Which is great for covering these vast distances. Yeah. But um, but getting that data back down to Earth, you know, quickly and reliably, that's that's still something they're working on. So China is like taking a lead on this one specific aspect, even if the whole the whole 6G race is still, you know, right. yeah. anyone's game. Exactly. OK, well, hold on, because it gets even more interesting. Uh -huh. Yeah, because apparently China's also announced that they've developed the world's first mobile 5G base station and get this for use on the battlefield. Whoa. What, like a, a mobile unit or something? Yeah, like a mobile unit that can provide high-speed, secure communication, you know, for up to 10,000 users, even in the middle of, you know, Golly. a military operation. Okay, that's... That's a whole other level. I mean, that could that could change how wars are fought. Right. It's like it's like something straight out of, you know, a futuristic, you know, military movie or something. Totally. I mean, think about it. Constant communication, high speed, even when you're on the move. That's a huge tactical advantage. Yeah. What kind of like what kind of advantages are we talking about specifically? Well, think about real time intelligence, sharing, you know, coordinating movements, reacting to to situations as they're happening much faster than your opponent. So we're talking about a serious shift in in, you know, the balance of power. Oh yeah, absolutely. And you know, it makes you wonder how other countries, you know, especially the ones with with really advanced militaries, how are they going to respond to this? I mean, it could it could even spark a whole new arms race, but this time it's focused on communication. Yeah, wow. That's that's a lot to unpack. So yeah. so putting it all together, right? This this 100 GBPs satellite link and this mobile 5G base station. I mean, does this mean that China is really pulling ahead in this in this global tech race? Well, it's certainly a strong argument. I mean, they've been putting a ton of resources into things like AI and, and telecom for years now. Mm -hmm. and, and clearly it's starting to pay off. It's not just about catching up to the West anymore. It's about about leading, it seems like. Yeah, it really does. So before we before we crown anyone the winner of this of this tech race, let's let's take a closer look at at what exactly China's claiming with this with this six G stuff. Okay, yeah, let's dive into that. All right, so we've got a hundred GBPs. That's that's crazy fast. I mean, that could really change how we use the internet, right? Oh yeah, definitely. But but for those of us who aren't you know engineers, what does this actually mean? Like, how would six G actually change our everyday lives? That's a great question. Um, 
The thing is, the jump from 5G to 6G, it's, it's not just about speed. It's about unlocking all kinds of possibilities that we can barely even you know, imagine Learn. right now. Oh. Like, for example, the article mentions that 6G will probably use higher frequency bands than 5G. Okay. Including including the terahertz spectrum. Terahertz spectrum. Okay, now that sounds a little a little sci-fi to me. What what does that even mean, practically speaking? Okay, think of it like this. Mm -hmm. Right now we're using a very small part of the electromagnetic spectrum for wireless communication. Okay. The terahertz spectrum. It's like opening up a whole new highway with with thousands of extra lanes. Wow. It could mean downloading like an entire season of your favorite show in seconds. Okay. Or having virtual reality experiences that are so realistic it's like it's like you're actually there. Okay, now you're speaking my language. That sounds pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. But but with all this potential, I mean, I also can't help but think about, you know, the downsides. Like what about the digital divide? Will everyone have access to these incredible speeds or is it just going to make the gap between you know, the haves and the have-nots even wider. Yeah, no, that that's a really important point. I mean, technology, it can be a great equalizer, mm -hmm. but it can also, you know, make existing inequalities worse. Right. So it's, it's crucial to make sure that this 6G infrastructure, you know, when they build it, it's built in a way that benefits everyone, not just, you know, the people who can afford the latest gadgets. Right, right. And what about, I mean, and what about the potential for misuse? I mean, we already talked about you know, China developing this technology for the military, could 6G be used for, like, you know, surveillance or even control in ways that we haven't even thought of yet? Yeah, it's it's definitely something to think about. I mean, any technology this powerful, it it has the potential for, you know, for good and for bad. Right. That's why it's so important to have these conversations, right, to talk about the ethics of 6G, you mm -hmm. know, to figure out how to make sure it's used responsibly. So it's not just about the technology itself. It's about it's about how we choose to use it. Exactly. It's about the kind of future we're building with these tools. Okay. Speaking of the future, um, the article mentions that this this mobile 5G base station that China has developed, it can support something like 10,000 users. Wow. Within a within a three kilometer radius even while it's moving. That's incredible. Yeah, I mean that's that's a crazy number of people. Can you can you kind of help us like visualize that? Like what would that look like in a real world situation? Sure. I mean imagine imagine a natural disaster zone, right? With this mobile base station, mm. you know, rescue workers, they could they could coordinate their efforts, they could share critical information, right. they could even connect with with victims even in areas where, you know, the regular communication infrastructure has been totally wiped out. So it's not just about like, you know, military stuff. This this could actually be a lifeline in in emergency situations. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, the ability to to just set up a a high capacity communication network like that hmm. quickly and easily. I mean, that could that could save lives in a disaster. Yeah. It could also be useful for, you know, big events like concerts or sporting events. Okay. Where you've got this massive influx of people all in one place. Yeah. And they all need to connect. So, so we're not just talking about faster internet here. We're talking about like a, a fundamental shift in how we think about connectivity, right? Right, right? Like instead of being tied to, you know, fixed infrastructure, we could have high speed internet pretty much anywhere. Yeah, that's that's really the vision behind 6G. It's about this this ubiquitous network, right? Right. That's that's seamless, it's everywhere and it can support all these new applications and experiences. And with with China making these these big moves in in this area. I mean, it really makes you wonder how this is going to reshape the global landscape. Like what does China's, you know, ambition in in tech mean for the rest of the world? Yeah, I mean, it, you, you can't deny it. China's rise as a as a tech powerhouse. I mean, it's it's one of the biggest things happening in the 21st century. Right. They've made it pretty clear that they that they want to be a leader, not a follower in shaping the future of technology. Right. And this could lead to, you know, more multipolar world where where innovation is not just coming from Silicon Valley anymore. It's it's coming from multiple centers of power. So so competition could actually be a good thing. Oh, absolutely. I mean competition it drives innovation, right? right? It, right. it forces everyone to push harder, to come up with better solutions. Right. The the key is making sure that this competition is is fair and that it benefits everyone, not just a select few. Okay, that makes sense. But what does that what does that mean like practically speaking? How can we make sure that this competition is is beneficial and not harmful? Well, 
for one thing, we we need to invest in R and D, mm -hmm. right? Research and development. Right. We, we can't we can't afford to fall behind in this race for six G. We also need to encourage collaboration, you know, between governments, businesses, research institutions, you know, to really speed up innovation and make sure that the benefits of this technology are are shared widely. So it's about creating an environment where where everyone can thrive, even with you know even with this fierce competition going on. Exactly, it's about using the power of technology to create a world that's that's more prosperous and more equitable for everyone. I like that. Right. Okay, but before we before we get too carried away, you know, dreaming about the future, let's let's come back to the present for a minute. I mean, the article it focused on on China's achievements, but but are they really the only ones in this race for six G? Are there other are there other countries or companies making you know significant progress? Okay, so welcome back to the deep dive. We've been talking about some pretty amazing uh, advancements in communication technology. You know, especially those claims from China about those crazy fast data transmission speeds. Yeah, and uh, and that mobile five G base station they're developing. You know, the one for the battlefield. Yeah pretty wild stuff. Right. We even talked about what all this could mean, uh, not just for the tech world, but for, you know, how we all connect, how businesses work, even even how, you know, global power might shift. Yeah. It's a lot to think about. It is. But before we wrap up, I want to bring it back down to earth a little bit. Like, why should all this matter to you, the listener? You know, why should we be paying attention to this stuff, even if it sounds a little, you know, sci-fi? <laughs> well, b because 6G, it's not some you know, far off futuristic concept. It's, it's closer than we think. And it has the potential to to really change our lives mm. uh, in some big ways. Yeah. Think about how much the Internet has changed things, you know, just in the past few decades. Mm. 6G, it's it's going to be an even bigger leap forward. So so what kind of changes are we talking about? Give us give us some examples. How could 6G actually affect our day to day lives? OK, imagine downloading a whole movie in like a second. Or, or virtual reality experiences that are so real, it feels like you're you're actually there. Self-driving cars that can communicate with each other, with the roads, with everything, instantly. That's the kind of potential we're talking about. Uh, those are those are some pretty cool possibilities. But I mean, you know, we've talked about the digital divide. We've talked right. about misuse. Are there are there any other like risks we should be thinking about? Yeah, one of the biggest concerns with any new tech is cybersecurity, right? The more connected we are, the more vulnerable we become. Right. So 6G networks, they'll have to be built with, with really strong security from the start to protect against hacking, data breaches, all those kinds of threats. So it's not just about making things faster. It's about making sure they're safe, too. Absolutely. Mm. And it's about making sure this technology benefits everyone, not just, you know, a few lucky people. We need to be thinking about access, affordability, privacy, all that right from the beginning. Right. But, I mean, that sounds like a huge challenge. Who's who's responsible for making all this happen? It's going to take all of us, really. Governments, businesses, researchers, even even individuals. Okay. We need to be having these conversations, you know, open and honest conversations about the benefits and the risks of 6G. And we need to work together to find solutions that are innovative, but also responsible. So it's not about one country, you know, winning the 6G race. It's about everyone working together to make sure this technology is used for good. Exactly. We have a chance to shape the future of technology here, to make it benefit all of humanity. But it's going to take vision, collaboration, a real commitment to ethical development. That's a, that's a great point to end on. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive into the world of 6G. I think it's pretty clear that this tech has the potential to, to really change our world. The question is, are we up to the challenge? Can we make sure this revolution benefits everyone? That's the question we all need to be asking. The future is, well, it's in our hands. And hey, if you want to learn more about space and technology, be sure to check out Space Info Club. Their website is www.spaceinfo.club. They've got all sorts of resources, articles, even courses to help you stay informed and, and get inspired. You can also find them on Instagram and YouTube. Just search for at spaceinfo.club. And that's it for this deep dive. Until next time, keep exploring.